Hi, I'm your host, Brian. This is episode one, Project Scarab Build. No, Project Scarab Resto Mod. No, Project Offshore Power Boat Repower. I don't know. We'll come up with something as we go. So, rather than wait until the end of the build to share it with you, I've decided that I'm gonna document as much of it as I can as I'm doing it, and then just start putting out videos out every couple of weeks or so, hopefully. Now, uh, this is not really a how-to series because I'm just guessing. But I guess we'll uh, figure it out as we go. Now, if you've seen the RC boat video and the open water run that we did with it, you'll see that driving and viewing from the side of a pond is terrible for footage. And when we went out in the boat, it was really good. But the boat was so slow not the RC boat that is, that, well, basically we were running with quarter throttle and the main boat, just the chase boat, couldn't keep up. The conclusion we came to is we need a faster boat. Offshore power boats are the best. But in New Zealand, we seldom, if ever, see them for sale or even around. But as fate would have it, well, looking for boats on New Zealand's version of eBay, trade me, I found a 22-foot scarab. Yeah. No engine, near new Bravo 1. It's a pretty cool looking boat, so it's looking quite appealing. The boat is in New Plymouth. I'm in Auckland, so roughly 200 miles away. Okay, the story he told me is that he bought the boat off a guy who imported it so he keeps the boat at the dry stack in the city uses it for a while all's good the Alpha 1 stern leg gives him issues so he replaces it with a new Bravo 1 and new gimbal the boat didn't have heat exchangers because it was probably a fresh water boat the exhaust rises eat through salt water runs back into the engine when he goes to use it again, valves are rusted, engine brakes, let's go, whatever. He's going to upgrade to a 502, so he bought the 502. Then at some point, a boat builder had been involved and they had uh, done a lot of reinforcing glass work in the engine room. Then he moves from Auckland to New Plymouth. It's west coast rough it's not really ideal conditions for that type of boat quits the 502 and then decides to quit the boat so to go and check the boat out we leave at 2 in the morning drive right up turn up to his place at about 9 in the morning maybe 9 30 go around have a look at the boat we just had a quick look at it seemed all right you know he seemed genuine enough so made an offer accepted it Boat up and drove back to Auckland. Subscribe. Working on luxury boats as a stainless fabricator in one of the best boating destinations in New Zealand. It's about time we moved up from the mighty 14 foot Starcraft. We've already built an Alloy RC catamaran and thought it'd be great to have a full size version. I imagined getting it, repowering it and away we'd go.
We totally overlooked a lot of the stuff that was bad with this boat because we'd had a bit of time to obsess about it and really the plan right from the beginning was to combine boating with our real passion, the rotary engine. More to the point, to have an offshore powerboat powered by a Mazda rotary engine. A regular manual gearbox version of the FD RX7 13B has the starter motor fitted after the engine. Unfortunately, where the engine needs to sit, the transom's in the way. Mounting the starter motor through the transom is not an option. However, the automatic version has the starter mounted forward like the Cosmo 13 and 20B engine. You can see the rear iron has a special cutout for this. Probably because the engineers at Mazda wanted to fit one of these engines into a boat themselves. Luckily I've saved a set of irons from an automatic engine for a project just like this. The engine will need to be marinized, which will involve a lot of custom made parts. But first the engine needs to be mounted and coupled to the stern leg. The V8 that was fitted prior has a flywheel cover that connects to the leg on the inboard side. A rubber coupler that connects to the flywheel and the engine is mounted to the stringers. So we need to fabricate this. Using 6mm stainless steel sheet, I was able to fabricate the flywheel cover. This is the rubber engine coupler that came with the boat. I'm going to buy the heavy duty version. After calculating the distances, I drew out a sandwich plate to go between the engine and the sump that has extensions to use as front engine mounts. My brother machined this bar as an engine alignment tool. The bar goes through the two main bearings and through the gimbal bearing for engine alignment. With the shaft in place, we could then make the brackets to hold the engine mounts and weld the rear mounts in place on the flywheel cover. The shaft needs to slide smoothly through the main bearings and the gimbal bearings to be aligned. With a bit of fine adjustment, we get it. Hey, if you're enjoying this, join the crew, subscribe. If you want to see more, hit the notification. Smash the bell. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Help me. Help me make a better show for you. Help me.